Atlanta's number one hip hop station, Hot 107.9. Of course, it's me, Manny Supreme, the most energetic entertainer, with another episode of Not Your Average Podcast with my family, my cousin. Yeah, straight up. Hey, let me be peasy. Hey, what how up, you bro? feeling, man? I'm feeling good. How you feeling? Good, but I just want to go back to this conversation. Before we cut the cameras on, you know, Peasy used to be a, a very athletic guy. For all my short people <laughs> I'm out there. Athletic, though. It's, it's not too late. When did you hit your growth spurt again? I hit my growth spurt when I was probably like 17, like in the middle of my 17th year. <laughs> so you was yeah. just like, ah, see, cause the doctor said, you know, growth for me is not going to stop till 25. Yeah. Now, I'm 6'1 right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. when I used, I used to be going juvenile out there, when I get out, my mom would be like, ooh, boy, you getting tall. My brother would be like, ooh, what are you doing? Like, little shit like that. Like, I ain't noticed it. So being in there, like, was you eating? Like, was that helping oh, with no. your. Oh, no. <laughs> like, the. the Okay, they used to make us work out and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if they had something like, to do with it. Like, played a role into it. And then, like, I, then I ate three times a day, like, all that shit. I don't know if all that shit had something to do with it. So, hey, Probably man. though. So, okay, being from Mobile, first and foremost, where musically does it start? Because, you know, you start to see new acts come out of Mobile now, but it's a couple of y'all that's, that's, that's sticking out. Yeah. What was growing up down in Alabama like? And then, I mean, you always on the travel and the go now. I mean, how has that change been different in your career? See, it was... I feel like it, it really helped me though, moving and shit, like traveling and shit helped me, feel me? Like, it helped me see how big the world is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like what I, what I was seeing growing up in Mobile, it, it helped me, like moving helped me notice that that shit wasn't normal. Like, no, nah, shit, I wasn't supposed to be seeing that shit. Like, you know what I'm mean? saying? Yeah. But, so look, when you moved to Sacramento, right? Mm -hmm. How different was that? Yeah, like, thing about it was different. And then I, I, I watched the interview, it said it took you like five years really to be like, okay, okay man, yeah, this like, ain't. This ain't what it was supposed to be. Really get it. You gotta think, bro. Whole time, like whole time I was out there, I was homesick mm -hmm. and couldn't get home type yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. damn, I wanna go back to town. Damn. I so you was you all in Cali. You, go you be sick. You yeah, just like, like man, I wanna man. go back home. Yeah. I'm always the new kid. Yeah. Like, I hate this shit. Like, you know but what you had your brother. Yeah, I had my brother though. And then, like, for a minute, me and my brother had got split up because mm -hmm. he had went to Atlanta with my dad. And then we used to be talking on the phone every day though. Like he said, man, I need you to come down there, bitch. You feel come in, I bro, we always had to stay close. Like we always had to stay close. Like I don't know, we felt like he was my guardian or uh, what, but we always just got to check in. Yeah, so he convinced me like, man, I gotta come down. There. So I go down there, I get, I come down here, I get kicked out of Tucker uh, High School. No. Yeah, I got kicked out of Tucker High School. Went back to California. What year was this? This was okay. So I ended, I ended eighth grade. I ended eighth grade at Tucker Middle. Uh huh. And I, I did like hell for ninth grade. It took a high Why'd you get kicked out if you cared to shit? I was fighting and shit. So you was, wait, was it like yeah. a, you was jumping? Was it one on one? Nah, it was one on one. one. See, did what, did what it was, right? All right. See. Break it down to us. All right, well, my mama, mama it used to be like a little group of us and she eat. Uh -huh. used to always instigate fights. Yeah. That's, that's my thing. I instigate shit. Yeah, I Just talk, talking. Yeah, I talk a lot of shit. Yeah. So I'm like, man, ooh, like, you know what I'm saying? We saw all instigating fights. So one day, I got it. Like, they instigated me one day. You feel me? Like, it was. It was <laughs> it's like, you knew it was coming. Yeah, you? like, one day, it was, and I couldn't turn it down because I'd have made bro fight him. I'd have made him fight him. It was your turn. You yeah, it was like, make I, was or break next, it. I was next in line. <laughs> so they were like, see, they wanted to see if my shit worked. You feel me? <laughs> so, but did you win, though? Oh, yeah, I won, bro. I walked bro uh -huh. to the point he ain't want to fight no more. I bro, like man, keep beating that nigga ass. So your brother was there. Yeah, my brother was there. We had this, we. I don't know why, but me and my brother all when we go to school together, we always had PE together. I don't uh -huh. know why, but he, he, he was in up. He beat that nigga ass. I'm like, he don't no more. <laughs> so the, the yeah. teachers came and it was just like. No hell no. See how I get caught. Uh huh. Boom, he go to his class bleeding. I go to my class, my hand bleed, cause I get white boy mad. When I get real mad, I get uh -huh. real white boy mad. I get to punch and shit. <laughs> he don't want, <laughs> real talk, he don't want to fight no more. So I punch the locker, I get myself a box of Oh man. I'm good. And my hand bleeding and shit. So Had I go everybody to class. in class scared. Yeah. <laughs> I go to class, I'm bleeding. He go to class, he bleeding. They pull him to the office, he tell them he fought me. Them, and then you just they walk come get me out of class. I'm like, I don't know what's out, somebody. <laughs> Man, I ran into something this morning. He just ain't stopped bleeding. Oh, so they end up kicking me out of key man. Crazy. Yeah, look, so, Michael. So yeah. when you first got started with music, what was that first, you know, confidence booster? Was it your mom? Was it Iceberg? That was like, okay, this this is something I can do. I, I swear to God, I would say, I'd say like it was, because I was always writing music and shit. I ain't never rapping to my mom. Mm -hmm. I ain't never rapping to my mom. I ain't never show my dad or nothing like that. Mm -hmm. My mom and my mom and my dad heard my music when they was already starting to do shit. You feel me? I I be rapping and shit and won't even tell them. Like, yeah. But all my life I be like shit. I like I want to do music. You feel me? Like, no, How'd you know though? 
I don't know, it was just something I, I felt dumb. like I felt this yeah. shit like man, that's what I'm gonna be doing that's type shit. Like I won't do that, you feel me? Like and it was, and then like I say moving to California, that's when I'm like, oh yeah, I can do this shit. Cause I'm rapping in school. They like, man, you raw, like you hard. They rocking with it. Yeah. So now I'm was like, it your oh, same yeah, flow that you got now, or has your flow changed? It was kind of like I feel like I was I was more like back then I used to think more about punchlines and shit like that, mm-hmm. and like nowadays I I think more about like reality like rap reality rap like, like what talk about what's going on like mm-hmm. film back then i used to be like like the metaphor shit niggas on now yeah when i was doing that shit when i was 12. Wait, 13, so you was, was the first rapper, rapper that was you on know, the metaphor i ain't gonna say i was the first rapper you know but i've been doing that shit i was yeah. good but i i switched over to more like because i feel like reality rap lasts longer yeah, like exactly. when you talk about shit that people go to see this shit feel, always it like, resonates a lot yeah. harder so when you were starting to rap you was on the west coast who, who was the biggest rapper out there at the time when I was when I when I first moved out right though, mm-hmm. all right, boom, all right, that's a good ass question. Let me see. They had D Lo, uh-huh. they had J Style, he had that. I'm getting paid. Ah, classic, 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 classic. Yeah, they um, then they had DB the General. They was fucking with DB. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else? What was like the Company. the biggest song back then though on the West Coast? Cause the West Coast music and vibe and culture is so much different than the East Coast. And for you to be out there spitting and, and, and rapping with your whole flow, like... You know, I was a young nigga, so I was around a lot of young people and yeah. shit. Like, they was on the MySpace my freestyles. I think it was a nigga mm-hmm. named uh, Kurt. Kurt. Young Kurt. Mm-hmm. Look, Kurt, remember that nigga, nigga who he just passed, though? Yeah, they was on bro hard. Like, so, were these artists, like, so these artists, like, they was, like, on the underground tip, or they yeah, was, was, like, like underground so, like, just West Coast strictly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were some of the... Who, who was really big on the West Coast back in that time? Like mainstream, who you was like, okay, this is one of those ones. Shit, that... uh, they was on E40 and shit. Ah. Uh, E40, uh. What's E40's ad lib? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out E40, man. Ooh. When I heard that ad lib for the first time, I was like, bro, you can do anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real talk, real talk. That's dumb hard, though. So, misguided. First and foremost, shout out to DJ Drama, Grammy Award winning Gangsta Grills. I mean, everybody's getting one. My mom just called me and, and see and trying to see if she could get a Gangsta Grills. I mean, this is yeah, hot, hot stuff right now. <laughs> and OMB Peasy himself has one. Talk yeah. about how that collaboration with, you know, with Drama came about. That shit came about like just being around, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, like when we first moved out here, like when I first came out here, we were staying in the Airbnb, you feel mm-hmm. me? Like, you know what I'm saying? Then we used to always go to like, you know, we, we was shopping around at the studio, seeing what the best studio to record at, but we mean always, street, like, man. yeah, we always was at Mean Street. You That's know? the one. My mom always was at Mean Street, and then Ken, my nigga Ken got a good relationship Shout with my nigga Lake. Yeah, you already know. He got a good relationship with my nigga Lake. Shout out Lake. My mom. So it just, it just kept growing. The relationship kept growing, you feel me? For sure. My mom. Now, with the title, I mean, when DJ Drama comes on, on the tape, it's just like... I had, yeah, you to, feel I, it, I had to sit up for a second. Yeah. I'm like, hey, it's one of them ones. Yeah. So just selecting that track list, was it a creative process? Because I see, like, when you go to any DSPs, it's on BPZ and DJ Drama. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them, it just says the artist names. Did you guys, like, did he help you with some of the tracks on the list? Or how did that come about? I feel like he, he helped me with, like, how many songs I want to put on, mm-hmm. on that motherfucking shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Told a nigga, like, they told a nigga, like, you know, take that many songs and get my point across and shit, you feel me? I was trying to put like 26 songs on it. Just flood them. Yeah, I want bullshit. I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna pee down. They like, shit, we can cut it down on song. Uh-huh. Nah, I mean, but as far as like picking the songs and like the shit I wanted to talk about, you feel me? I feel like that was all I mean, you feel me? But bro did say when he when he was recording this shit, like, his, like when he was talking uh-huh. to shit, like, man, I'm going through this shit right now anyway, so it's like, it's easy just yeah. coming out type shit, you know Punching what I mean? in. Yeah. So how was that studio session? Were you, you guys recorded here in Atlanta when you guys did that? I recorded some of the songs, I recorded some of the songs in, in, in LA, some of the songs in uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Fire. So from, from all of your fans, what should they be expecting next from Peasy? Like any, you know... New music coming, yeah. to, you know, collabs. We know you always out mixing and mingling. I'm finna go in the studio and start working on my next, on my next project. Work ethic. Yeah, right now, for real. Fire. Um, so, hey, man. I don't know what I want to call it, though. Wait, wait, wait. Roughly, a guesstimation, how many songs are you sitting on in the vault right now? For me? Yeah. How many songs? Yeah. Can't check, check him if he lying now. We got Ken yeah, in here. Yeah, bro, I got so much. All right, so look, nigga. I got... <laughs> I got songs that I done lost. Uh-huh. Can I count them? Yes, you can. Count I'll the songs that. that I done lost. That's what Drake said. You find a hard drive, count. give it to your favorite. Count, 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 <laughs> count, 
For real time. You can get that shit in about a mama. I'm they gonna take it. I'ma take it. I'm about to but start. But goddamn, it's the cell phone that the police got that I'm trying to get back from my last case. So the feds got about two albums. You feel me? But they got about, they got about, <laughs> five, I swear to God, the police got about seven albums no. on my mama. Seven mixtapes. We gotta go grab them. For sure. We gotta go grab them. Got that net phone. Then the net phone right here. Okay, I'm gonna show you show, my notes. Show man. Come on. Bring them up. Look at this, man. Bring them up. So you gotta you gotta catch him if you have to catch man. We asked ask a lot of people. Oh, okay. Oh, no. We okay. scrolling, man. Okay. We scrolling, Okay. Man. We okay, show the camera, show the camera. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Man. Cause they got they gotta see this shit like so He ain't capping now. All these ain't all these ain't one song. All these bitches got three, four. You feel me? Inside the note. Like, okay. This shit for real. Hold on, hold on. Keep going, keep there going, go. keep going. I got a few notes in this bitch like 20, a whole mix. Hold on. Man, shit for real. This a whole tape on my mama. That's a whole tape. So you legit be out here working. Yeah, Rappers, yeah, you, you see Peasy's work at these. So if you at the crib real. right now, just, you know, live again, you need Cinnabon, my boy PZ is I'm on, still scrolling. on two, your tail. They buy two tapes. This note got, this, this little thing right here got 32 you, you songs. You need to send me some of them. Yeah, I man, this shit for real. You got to send me some. Then it's a little EP, little rap. Fire. <laughs> y'all should see these names that he got on here, too. It's some crazy collabs. Look, on all DSPs right now, Miss Goddess, shout out to Mr. Thanksgiving, DJ Drama, on BPZ. Shout out to Ken. Putting it all together, of course, it's me, Manny Supreme, the most energetic entertainer. And just like that, we out. Yeah, sir.